Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are here in the baby barn again because today it is time to lock down the quail eggs that we have been following, put them in a hatcher, take them out of their incubator, put them in a hatcher, and then we are going to wait another few days and see what hatches. Now, just for clarity's sake, it is day 14. Okay, so it has been two weeks since we put the quail eggs in the hatcher, in the incubator. Apologies. <laughs> this is the hatcher. This is the incubator. So we put our eggs in the incubator 14 days ago, two weeks. Now we're going to transfer them into the hatcher. Okay. I know these look the same, but they're actually one, not the same. They're two separate incubators. This is the Brinsea Maxi 2 Advanced. This is the Brinsea Maxi 2 Eco. This has a turner, which you need to turn your eggs. This does not have a turner because you don't need a turner for hatching. I don't hatch in the same incubators that I incubate in. All right, I have this dedicated incubator in this baby barn for hatching my eggs. I'll put links to both of these machines because this makes an excellent hatcher. No turner, it doesn't sense humidity, it has just your regular mercury thermometer, it's not digital. I don't need digital for this. Okay, I have it preset to 37.5 Celsius or 99.5 Fahrenheit, and that is all they need. I don't add any water to my hatcher because it's already so humid here, like between 30 and 40%, that if I put water in here, my quail drown. So let's just lock down the eggs and we'll talk about each step. The first thing you want to do is prep your hatcher. So I'm just going to take the top off the hatcher. Just stick that down here. So this hatcher has literally nothing, okay? No turner, nothing. I have a mat down that I cut from some of that shelf paper that kind of, it's a sort of padded, kind of waffly weave shelf paper, okay? I use that, yes, a lot of incubators come with cardboard hatching mats. I don't love the cardboard hatching mats, so I use the cardboard hatching mats to cut a piece of this kind of padded shelf liner to put in my incubator because it gives the chicks really good grip because they do need grip. If you don't have anything and they're just walking on this plastic, then what happens is they slip, they can get splay leg, it's not good for them. They need something with grip. So you do need to line your hatcher with something grippy. So if I can remember, I will try to put a link to a roll of this stuff and you can just cut it to whatever size fits in your incubator or hatcher. So that is how you prep that. Remember that the temperature for your quail eggs is going to be 37.5 Celsius or 99.5 Fahrenheit. That's the same temp that we have been incubating them at. You do not need to change your temp. You don't need to go up. You don't need to go down. Same temperature. They'll be fine. For humidity, I am going with the exact same humidity that I have incubated at. And that means I don't add any water because it's really humid here. You may have to add water. Aim for between 30 and 40% humidity. That is pretty ideal for hatching quail eggs. If you get too humid, what ends up happening is the quail eggs will drown. So they'll drown in their shells. They'll pip and then they'll drown. Okay, because they can't, there isn't enough air really. There's too much moisture. So really watch your humidity, keep it on the low side. As they pip, it will rise. So don't worry too much about humidity, keep it on the low side. Not below 30, okay, that would be a little too low, even for me, but you know, keep it on the lower side. If you go over 45, you're pushing it. So now what we wanna do, and I have unplugged my incubator already, because it was down on the shelf below. So I've unplugged my incubator, so the temperature is slowly coming down. Don't worry about that. As long as it's only a few minutes, it's not that big a deal. So we're gonna take the lid off. There we go. And we have these five eggs. Remember, all six of these eggs were from one hen, because that's what I'm hatching this week in this incubator. This, all my incubators are full. <laughs> this incubator, is not completely full because I'm hatching eggs just from one hen. So these five were developing right on schedule. This one probably had stopped developing. So we're gonna check again before we lock them down. So the way we do that is first we shut the door of the baby barn and turn off the light. There we go. So we're going to do, I'm just gonna move the camera 
a little bit just so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, again, candler. I'll put a link to this guy again because you do need it. You need a candler. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to check our eggs. Okay, that guy, see there? It's hard to see, I know. But what you basically see is a little bit of a ring at the top of your egg. A clear air sac. So that guy's good. This guy actually stopped developing. Okay, you probably can't see it on camera, but he's kind of brighter. So he stopped developing. So we're setting that one aside. That's a shame, but it happens. This one is right on track. Okay, so you'll see there's a little ring at the top, little air sac. That one's on track. And so is this one. Perfect. And that one. So we have four. Now remember, this is the one that we were pretty sure was dead last time. And yes, indeed, it started to develop and then it died. It's actually significantly brighter. Okay, so it's significantly brighter than the other eggs. And so these two eggs did not survive. So we're going to turn our candler off. Turn the light back on. There we go. And move back into position. There we go. Okay, so these two eggs, these two here, did not finish developing. Okay, these two started, but then they quit. That happens. So I'm actually just going to chuck these in my compost pile. Okay, that's where these are going to go. Just chuck them in my compost pile. Be gentle handling them because you don't want to crack something. They may be rotten inside. And if you crack a rotten egg, they're going to stink. So gently, gently with those eggs. So these eggs, we're going to transfer to the hatcher. And yes, there's only four of them. That's okay. Don't try to make them stay in a specific spot. So if you put one down and it rolls like that, leave it like that. Don't try to make it stay in a specific place. Okay? They kind of find their own balance because there's a chicken there moving around. Okay? So now we don't need this piece anymore. We just need to focus on the hatcher here. So the incubator is now empty. So with the hatcher, we take the lid, put that on, and now we are not going to touch this. I'm going to lower it onto the shelf and plug it in, and once it is plugged in, we are not going to touch this. Okay, so this is day 14. We're looking at day 17 before they hatch, maybe day 19. Okay, so we are not going to lift this lid. I don't care what's happening. Do not lift this lid because what's going to happen is the humidity is going to escape from in here and you don't want that. So what you want to do, once these guys go into lockdown, which is what we're doing right now, leave it. No touchy. Everyone makes the mistake of opening your hatcher when you shouldn't. We've all done it. Okay. Every single one of us. Do not pretend that you haven't. We all did it. My first hatch, I couldn't stop opening the lid. <laughs> I know better now. That's a horse. Oh, good, he's not in the pen. Hi, Shadowfax. Not going to worry about that. Oh, yeah, that was my fault. Never mind. Doesn't matter, Shadowfax is fine, not in the pen. We're not going to worry about it. So, that is entirely my fault. I didn't clip the gate. My bad. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. So, we do not open this incubator, okay? We are going to put our hatcher away. We are not going to touch it. We're going to plug it in. The cord goes right in here, and I will show you what it looks like plugged in, which is not that impressive, but I'll show you anyway in a minute. So we're going to not touch it. We're not going to touch it because in three to five days, these eggs are going to hatch. How many will hatch? You really don't know. Once they go into lockdown, it is out of your hands. Okay, just like these two duds, these were out of, your, out of our hands too. There's nothing we could have done. Okay, some eggs just aren't going to make it. That's just the way it is. Okay, it's just, it's really important to know that because sometimes what happens is people get all excited that they're going to get 12 chicks because they put 12 eggs in. You may not. You might only get 8 or 10. It doesn't matter. Okay, as long as you get something and you'll get better at hatching as time goes on. Have I had 100% hatches? Yes. 
Do I expect 100% hatch? No, it's good not to expect it. So this is a fairly young laying hen. So if even two of these hatch, I'll be pretty happy about that, to be honest. She's fairly young. This is her first batch of eggs that we've hatched. So I'm hoping for four, but I'd be happy with two. Young hens, sometimes their eggs are not quite ready to become little babies. So what I'm going to do now is just move this below onto the shelf. Okay. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> now I just need to grab its cord. There we go. Plug it in. Okay, so I'm just going to go down and show you here. This is now plugged in. Okay, so that light is solid. It starts to flash when the incubator comes to temperature. We're not gonna worry about coming to temperature too much because it will do it on its own. So I'm not gonna worry. The cord is now plugged in. It, I don't preheat my hatcher. It's not that big a deal because this incubator takes about five to seven minutes to get to temp. So I'm not gonna worry about it, okay? It is as good as it's going to get. So I'm just gonna push this back a little more because there's a cat in here and I don't want the cat to knock it off the uh, shelf. And now this incubator is ready for some more uh, eggs. And yes, I know the humidity says only 17%. And I know someone's gonna point out that that's too low. It's not 17%, it's just because I took the lid off and I've been mucking with it. It'll uh, get back to its normal humidity in a minute. So that's how you lock down, okay? Next time, we will hopefully, if we can, come and see if we can film any chicks hatching. Maybe we'll catch it, maybe we will not catch it. It's entirely possible that we'll miss it, okay? That happens quite a lot. But those are our four eggs. Okay, we will come back in three days and see who's hatched. Three to five days. Remember, it's not, they're not machines. They're little tiny babies trying to hatch. So if your temp was a little low, they'll hatch a little late. Temp's a little high, they'll hatch a little sooner. So three to five days, we will come back and check with these guys. So we'll see you tomorrow.